as it turns out, there is a way to make shooting multiple animals from a herd, at least when they're in a zone, a little more consistent that I had never thought of before, and I kind of realized this on stream on Friday. Now, I'm not the first person to come to this realization, but I definitely wanted to show it in a video because I think it could definitely help you guys out in different grinds. So there are a bunch of red deer stags up here. I'm going to say this seven and that six are the best. And basically all this is, is watching the one that we're not going to shoot first. So his head is down. We're going to shoot this one. And then this guy over here, it's going to take him a long time to finish that drinking animation. So we got through to a lung. It's going to take them both down. And by the way, I purposely grabbed the 30 out six, not only because I said that I wanted to do a video specifically using it, but also because it's not the M1. It's not that semi-automatic, super fast follow-up shot. And you saw it took time to line up that shot. So even with a bolt action rifle, this can work. And I think it's really important to kind of do that, especially on these species that tend to flee quickly otherwise. Because so often I thought it was just kind of random how long they stick around, but using that drinking or feeding animation to your advantage can really allow you a lot more time to get your follow-up shot in there. And luckily for us, they died kind of side by side here. I'm not so sure that either of these were that special. The seven was a gold, but we got along there kind of as he was starting to go drink. That's maybe the one issue that can happen with this particular tactic. And then I guess this one would have been a single lung as well, but when you're trying to time like one animal going to drink and then kind of shifting back to another animal to shoot, you can potentially have issues with that first shot. So it's important to, I would say, kind of take your time and make sure that they're going to line up correctly. But a lot of times they're going to be closer together than those red deer were. So sometimes you don't even have to take your eye off the initial target. I think maybe this will actually be a better example. So two pretty nice level four axis deer here. And actually nice that the five bolt is the one that turned because I always recommend taking the more difficult shot first. So we want to make sure this guy's headed down when we go for the shot on the pie ball, but this time we can kind of keep our eyes on both. Now, a little bit annoying that he turned too, but we can get that shot off. And yeah, I mean, he's got so much time in that animation to lift his head that it's no problem to shift the crosshairs over and get that follow-up shot in there. And even at close range, that kind of works. We saw some of them spook really quickly, but our second one, our second level four, he had to finish that drinking animation before he could flee. Now I'm guessing at say, I don't know, 50 meters, 20 meters, something like that. There's some range where they'll probably flee immediately, but even there at 75, that was not a problem. So this is gonna be our dark. I actually thought that we shot a lower weight one. Was the pie not as big as I thought? Maybe I had those two confused, but I swear there was a 50 to 62 kg one. Cause the pie looks pretty good to me. Yeah, he's 63 kg. Well, I mean, it worked out even better than I initially thought it was going to. That was two good sized deer. But either way, you could see that still. Like, we're able to quickly get those follow up shots in there. And I just think that's really important. So, I wanted to continue with our red deer grind out here on Parking Fernando, just kind of looking for rares and diamonds. And kind of having realized that tactic is something that I think even I should practice, I figured we might as well do that out here and just kind of work on getting that tactic down and also getting some respawns. I do think it's interesting though, like I always thought that realistically you could only get one red deer out of a herd because pretty much they would flee before you could get that second shot, but if you do kind of time it right, and it's difficult in this case to see that back one when his head is down, but it's pretty consistent to actually get two, so even though I generally say take the harder shot first, the front one is a mythical. So we're going to take that shot, and yeah, I mean, kind of tough to see, but no big deal to get that shot through there and get him. There actually was a third, I think he's a little level five, maybe. I don't love that angle. It had to be so close to getting like a brain or a neck shot, but I think that one's going to get away on us. I don't know that a 30-06 shot like that would kill him, but I guess worth a try. And by the way, kind of irrelevant to the whole kind of point of like trying to work on that particular tactic for grinding, but this is probably my favorite rack for red deer in the game. Maybe even more so than the diamonds, and it's always like a big seven or a small mythical. I'd really love like on this grind to end up with a rare with that particular rack, because to me that kind of is like a real 
trophy-sized red deer from what you see more in real life. And then of course just our level 6, which despite the fact that we're shooting through brush, we still managed to single lug. And I was looking at the map, that's still tier 2 hunting pressure, so I don't imagine that level 5 is going to die. Maybe next time we can get him with whatever kind of respawns, because again, shooting 2 isn't as difficult as I thought it was. Okay, so bit of a change of plans for this one. I spotted this level 9 red deer from across the way, so go figure. We come out here to grind, and there's already a 9 waiting on us, but I told my girlfriend Kyla that I saw a level 9 and I was going to uh, shoot that, and she recently shot a diamond red deer by accident with the 243, and told me I should try to take it with the 243. So not only are we going to do that, we're also going to hopefully still get a shot at that mythical up there again with the 243. It would be difficult to switch weapons and still get that shot off, but it should be doable as long as we line this up. Now, in this case, we're going to be more worried about what the 9 is doing because I want a specific angle to take that shot, but when we get into around 75 meters, we're going to attempt this. So about 90 meters gives us the clearest shot, and the wind is shifting, so we're going to have to do this pretty quickly. I want to pay attention to that mythical as well to make sure that he's got his head down. Now, in the middle of his animation here, the level 9, I keep on seeing him twitching just like that, and that could be what messes us up, but when this guy goes to drink, we're going to try to do this. They're about lined up, so that'll be a neck shot. Man, I don't know if Rascal just cost us that shot. I don't think we got it off. And then we hit a tree. I think we'd have had it. But, I mean, we still did drop the level 9. I think. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, interesting little challenge there from Kyla just in the middle of a video. But I actually think this is a good opportunity to not only show how effective the 243 can be, but also the fact that you can get a diamond with that starting weapon, even of a larger species like this. Now, that estimate was 251 to 297. Diamond for Red Deer, I think, is right on 251, so he should be a guarantee. To me, he looks absolutely huge, so fingers crossed for something good. 263.5 and a max weight. I thought it when we were scooting over here. Right through the neck there, kind of as intended, but... For some reason, it's like my single player maps only respawn like max weight diamonds if I'm not grinding for them. If I'm grinding for diamonds like say, I guess Faladir over on Te Awaroa, they never spawn as 100kg, they're always, you know, 97, 98, and stuff like that, but we really haven't gotten to do much red deer grinding on Parquet and I wanted to kind of start today, and there was a level 9 out there waiting, but again, it's in that max weight range, and I wonder if there is something to that. Like when you focus on a species, if for some reason they're less likely to respawn as a max weight, but it's interesting. It just seems to happen over and over again. Well, I came up here for water buffalo, but before we do anything else, I think we need to drop that little spike mule deer. I was hoping that, that there would be like two water buffalo side by side though, because I tend to consider them a species that flee pretty quickly. Unfortunately, I think we likely spooked him with that shot. I guess he's just beyond 200 meters. There is one, but that doesn't really help us. So I guess instead, maybe we can try some longer shots on Mule Deer. We're probably going to have to move out of the tripod unless we go for that one. Maybe that'll work. So we already reloaded. If we can get that guy and then this one, we should be set. It's going to be tough, but we know the one on the right had his head down. And he definitely would have fled. Like I saw the fleeing come up. Generally longer range, they take longer to spook, so I don't think that is that big of a deal. But still being able to do it and having plenty of time to line up that shot, I think is a good sign. And I was getting ready to ask, like in the, what would have been the next upcoming herd, but then there was a level 9 red deer and all that went out the window. But I was curious how many of you guys already do this, like already try to specifically take your shots when your second animal has his head down drinking or feeding, because, I mean, we've seen it today. Every shot we have plenty of time, there's no need to rush to get that second shot off because we can see at what point they are in the animation so it's easy to know if they're basically ready to spook. But got our nice little 65 scoring spike and we'll head up and claim those other two. But yeah, 
I really am curious how many of you guys are doing this, because like I said, I know I'm not the first to discover it, but I really wanted to put it out there for anybody that didn't know about it. But then I want to say, this was the, I guess, second buck we shot, and he was a gold at 223, which, for that weight, is pretty insane. I don't think they usually get gold that low. And then, hopefully the other one is not too far away. I see the vital blood. He must have gone this direction then. Kind of interesting they didn't go the same way, but yeah, I mean, we just shot two mule deer bucks at about 250 meters and didn't even need to rush the shots. I think that's something to continue doing going forward. Well, we have one, but not a second water buffalo to work with, so I think the way that we'll do this is actually shoot the level three mule deer behind him first. It should still spook him the same way, and really probably save us a little bit on tracking, so we are going to use the 300. The mule deer most likely is going to drop, but it's all about taking the shot with the water buffalo actually drinking, and then kind of seeing how that does. So I wanted to give him time to lift his head because I didn't pay attention to how long he had done it. That's that. And then, yeah, I mean, it looked like he was going to spook a little more quickly than, say, in a normal circumstance, like with the red deer or mule deer that we've seen, but we still got that lung shot in there, and say the first animal we shot was a water buffalo as well. I think we'd have been fine to get both of them. So the mule deer dropped as expected. I mean, a 300 round double lung liver and stomach. No surprise there, but then it almost had to be a lung shot because our water buffalo is dead right here beside it. And that's something I would like to kind of play around with a little bit more in the future. Because we did get a single lung and almost even into the heart there, but I'd love to know like maybe some comparison times between shooting when your second animal is drinking versus when it's got its head up because I think that time save is super, super significant. But anyway, that's going to be something for a little bit down the road because I do want to go back to the trophy lodge quickly and take a look at our new red deer. I want to say at 263.5, he would be our second biggest diamond true X red deer ever. And I mean, he's next to couple of diamond gensbuck and a diamond k buffalo and just forget about the diamond chamois he absolutely dwarfs them in my mind and we had a diamond whitetail on that spot and there's a couple of rare whitetail in this room anyway so i think that is a really nice upgrade and i mean on a hunt where to me it didn't really matter if we got anything that special i just wanted to kind of play around with that kind of strategy and see how it would do on some other species because i think we did it on moose on medved it's kind of like where i randomly realized that would be a thing that would work and going forward i think that's going to be the move i think that's going to help on especially those species i mentioned that tend to spook a little quicker and like i said hopefully it can help you guys and i am really curious how many of you guys have been doing it for you know some amount of time now so again let me know in the comments below if you have been and i think that is officially going to do it for this video so thank you guys for watching and i'll see you next time